Two games to go, two points away from the relegation zone. It's now or never as we head into episode 8 of the Continental Shift. We have exciting news here at AD Suter FC. We have our first youth intake of the save. Here it is now. So a five-star excellent intake with four five-star potential players. Jonathan Ayer is a goalkeeper. Musa Silla, a right back, a left back in Hector Abab. And George Ortega, a striker who looks very, very, very promising indeed. Four players classed as top talents with at least three and a half star potential, if not four star. So, Adri Valles there as a centre back is a four star potential player with Fran Montanez, Pedro Ortera, and um, uh, Amadou Barry as three and a half star potential. Five good talented players, two and a half to three star potential players, and two star potential players and decent talents. Not going to get too excited about those, but these guys at the top, the elite talents. One in goal, two at the back, and one very, very exciting striker. They're definitely players to get excited about. Since you were last year, we played three games, drawing two and losing one. And that means we've only won one game in the second half of the season, this 2-1 win at home over Castilla. So one of the biggest issues seems to be the fact that we keep conceding late goals. So Cultural Leonese scored in the 95th minute, Algeciras in the 83rd minute, Linense in the 80th minute, Pontevedra in the 93rd minute and Celta Vigo in the 91st minute. It means we've dropped 10 points from winning positions in the past 7 games. If we're playing 80 minute games we'll be in the playoffs. but. Obviously, football's a 90-minute game. We'll concede in late. Is it fitness? Is it concentration? Am I not changing the tactics well enough? I, I don't tend to change them that much. Do I need to time waste, drop people back? What do I need to do to fix the late goals issue? So, as mentioned, we are just two points outside the relegation zone, sitting 12th in the league on 40 points. Today, we play Rao Mahonda, who are fighting a relegation battle themselves and sit just one place outside the drop zone and only one point behind us. On the final day, we travel to Sanse, who are two places above us, but six points clear. So we are unlikely to catch them. We may need to go and catch a result at the Nouveau Matapin on the which translates, I think, to the new Matador Stadium, where we might need to become bullish to come away with the three points that keeps us up. And the great news is, if we do stay up, I will be here next season. I have been offered a new contract, I have signed a new contract, and I will remain with FC Suter until the summer of 2024. So another thing I've noticed in the inbox recently is the match preview. And looking at the preview for today's game, two things stand out. We are described as performing above expectations, we are overachieving, which is great. But, the very first word of it, we are also described as penniless which isn't so great and could become a huge issue for us in the summer when we're looking to try and strengthen the squad. So, this is the team we're going to go with for our first game today. 15-year-old George Ortega became our youngest player, 15 years and 301 days to be exact, and he is starting today. Alejandro Perez here hasn't been in great form recently, so we'll put in an Ortega and hopefully the young man can step up to the plate. We've gone back to the shadow striker and advanced playmaker roles with Matteo and Hualde filling those roles and then using Romaric as the deep lying forward. Our defensive midfielder remains as Adri Cuevas as a regista and our defence and goalkeeper remain unchanged having played really well recently slowing the number of goals that we have conceded considerably. We've also changed to the attacking mentality. Hopefully it will help us get players forward quicker try and break lines more and hopefully create more and score more goals which we have had a bit of an issue with so with the team picked let's get to the game so we kick off here in what could be classed as a relegation decider we start with the first highlight Bordel to Cuevas back to Bordel Jaita on the left hand side of the defence back to Leandro patient play Bordel Gutierrez Cuevas Turns it around to the shadow striker, Hualde. Back to Gutierrez. We are keeping the ball really well. Hopefully this leads to something for us and not them nicking the ball quite high up the pitch. Cuevas. Romaric. Doing really well. Alan Garcia on his right-hand side. Whips the ball in. Towards Ortega, the 15-year-old. It's cleared away. 
And now they have it around the back. They hoof it forward. Bordel wins it. Cuevas picks it up and loses it himself. And now they are on the break. Alieto on the left-hand side. Garcia slides in but misses completely, giving Alieto space to cross it in. David comes through and heads just over. It's a warning sign for us. We were really patient there. We worked it really well, but unfortunately couldn't create anything and they broke forward. Another high up for us. Alan Garcia on the right-hand side. Oh, Omar Jeter was up for the throw-in and flicks it in. I don't know. No, I think it's being disallowed for offside. Alan Garcia to Huale. Back to Garcia. Big looping ball in and it was very, very close. Very close. He got a small little flick on it. It didn't look like much, but it was deemed to be offside. Rayo Mahonda, who we're playing today, have dropped into the relegation zone. We have dropped down one place as Merida look like they are winning here. Yes, they are. So Merida Linense ideally would end in a draw for us because they are playing each other both on 38 at the start of the game. So if that could end in a draw, that would be great. If we could win, even better. We do have a free kick to end the half. We are over the allotted added time. Matteo on the right-hand side. Will he cross it or shoot? He does shoot. And he heads. It, it, he shoots over. Maybe just clipping the, the top of the bar or the top of the net as it went over. Not too far away, but ideally about two foot lower would, would have been great. Second half starts today. Merida are now 2-0 up. Two penalties in that game. But this game has flown through without a highlight in the second half. Ortega hasn't done well. He is young. He's 15. I'm not really worried about that. We're going to bring Alejandro Perez on for him. Next change at wing back. Corjijo on for Casado. And then Liberto coming on in the midfield. As the advanced playmaker in that midfield. And Merida are 3-0 up. Fuentes completes his hat-trick. But Mahonda have a free kick. But it is cleared. Cuevas now. Breaking forward. And quite an aimless ball really. Cut out by Felix. And Salama knocks it forward. Davin must be offside. Hits the bar. And it is pulled back for the offside. He looked a mile off. Merida off. 4-0 up now. Another penalty. They've had three penalties today out of their four goals. And Fuentes has scored all four goals. Three penalties. And they are now 5-0 up. We have drawn 0-0. Let's see what that puts us in in the league. I've had a look through this. I've had a look through the league rules. And this is how things are looking going into the final game of the season. It's quite simple to me. We win and we stay up. Simple as that. If we lose or draw, it gets a little bit more complicated. I have a better head-to-head -head record than four of the five teams below us. So if we don't win and end up level, I should stay above them. However, Linense have drawn with us twice. So if... They win, we lose, and there's a six-goal swing. Linense could stay up, and we could go down if other results don't go our way as well. Mahada Honda and Al Jazeera are only one point behind us. So if both of those teams win and we either lose or draw, then we are going to be down as well. So there's lots of different things to look at. There's lots of the forms all over the place. Well, drawing games all over the place. People are losing games, winning the odd one. We can't buy a win at the minute. So it's going to go down to the wire. I'm going to be looking at a league table all through the 90 minutes. Hopefully we can stay up. So this is it. This is the team I am going with for our make or break final game of the season against Sanse. Two changes to the team. Loisme comes in for Matteo who has picked up an injury. And Alejandro Perez has come in for our 15-year-old sensation, George Ortega. I say sensation. He hasn't been... Great, but yes, he is 15. He needs to be bedded in bit by bit. Hopefully, Alejandro Perez can come in and get a few goals and keep us up. We kick off here. I'm going to keep this around the ground screen on to see how other teams are getting on. Nothing else going on here. We haven't had a shot yet. 50 possession. Keepers haven't been tested. We are still up and we have a highlight five minutes towards the end. Cuevas with a free kick in. Headed towards the goal and just over. We are up to 13, 42 points and at half time we are nil nil. This is very, very tense. But we go forward. Cuevas through to Alejandro Perez. And oh He could have settled it. Alejandro Perez could have settled it, but he puts it over. Lense are winning against San Fernando. Two teams in the relegation zone playing each other. They are staying up, but they are not above us due to the fact we are drawing. But Sante have a corner and they drive it in and we are not drawing anymore. This is worst case scenario for us. What do I do? Minutes, we are 15th. 
I think we've got nothing to lose. I think we've got nothing to lose. Nito, Berto, wingers on attack. Go on, kid. Make yourself a make yourself a hero. Farage for his last game for us. Fifteen minutes to go. I can't rely on other teams here. Just over five minutes left, plus added time. We've gone up a place. I don't know how we've gone up a place. I'll have to have a look at that. We come forward here. <coughs> Building from the back. Jader takes his time. Cuevas, Luismi, Huale. Goes all the way back to like Robin Lafarge for some reason. Jaita. A lot of balls on forward. But Jaita gives it away. Raul down the right hand side. Cuevas. Gets rid. Three minutes of added time. We were just over 30 seconds into that now. Martinez down the down the left hand side. Raul to the back post. We are 2 0 down. We are 2 0 down. Now that's not going to necessarily mean anything unless one of the teams below us wins. We had to go. We couldn't rely on other teams. We had to go for it. And it was going to leave us open. We are in 14th place. Linense are staying up. And I think, I think we've stayed up. I think we've stayed up. I don't care. I don't know what I just said to him. Oh, we're still up. We're up. How have we done that? I have no idea how we've done that. Oh. That was stressful. We had to go for it. I know we lost 2-0. We had to go for it. Because I couldn't rely. If one of these teams had got two quick goals, that 1-0, two quick goals could have turned it around. Wow. Right, let me get my composure back. I'll skip forward to the end of season review and come back then. So here we are with the end of season review for AD Suta FC, our first end of season review, hopefully the first of many. Loads of players coming in this year. Strangely enough, our signing of the season is somebody we promoted from our B team, who's only played two starts for us, 10 sub appearances. 6.58 he's got signing of the season we've allegedly paid over the odds to get him i don't get it i really don't get it i think board out there 6.99 average rating the best player when since he came in we had a couple of holes to fill at center back came in, in in january after we lost a couple of players and it's been brilliant for us 18 appearances 6.99 not perfect but he's been outstanding compared to some of the other defenders we've had in and in our moments to remember, our biggest win was a 4 0 win against San Fernando, one of the relegated teams. A match to remember is, of course, it's going to be these guys. Rayo Marahonda, a 3 1 win away from home. That probably kept us up, to be honest. And our goal of the season was from Nito. I think I called it as goal of the season in an earlier episode. Here it is, yeah. Nito from here curls it in. The best goal I've seen. I've, I've, I've said it before, the best goal I've seen on Football Manager ever. Finance wise, this is where we start to become a little bit affected. Sponsorship has gone up. Broadcast revenue has gone up. Hospitality has gone up. Match day retail has gone up. We are over £500,000 in debt. This needs to go up massively. These need to go up massively. We need to do something here. And accolade wise, I won absolutely nothing this season. I'm not surprised. No manager of the months. Definitely not manager of the year. But doesn't matter. We stayed up. I've got a new contract. We go again next year. Fans play of the season. Adri Cuevas. 33-year-old midfielder. He has been superb for us. At the heart of our midfield. Just in front of the defence. Showing us up. And being our sort of playmaker. In that centre of the midfield. Alando Perez with the young player of the season. Really came off the ball though towards the end of it. Usama was the signing of the season. Once again, we're still unsure how that exactly happened. Nito with that goal of the season. Perez with the eight goals. We had uh, Lorenzo Gonzalez who had eight goals before Christmas. Before he tied he was big time. Played in international football and left us in January. So Perez stepped in while he was away at the World Cup. And in the month of January he scored a few goals. But really didn't do much after that. We wanted to stay up. We started really well. We thought we were going to do great. And we really tailed off towards the end of the season. We've got a bit of money. 32 grand per week and 60 grand transfer budget so the next time you join me on the continental shift we will be firing towards season two going through the transfer window and towards the start of the new season exciting times coming up is there going to be big changes with the finances looking like they are i think we might have to make some massive changes here i've got some free signings coming in some of them i'm really excited about some of the youngsters i'm really excited about but can we get our mid-table position that they want us to get next season we're going to need some firepower up front. We're going to look to the loan market, see what we can get. But it's going to be a difficult summer. 
So for now, once again, thank you for joining me on the Continental Shift. If you've got this far in the video and you've liked it, please hit the thumbs up button, leave us a comment, and please give the channel a subscribe. Once again, this is still a new channel for me. We're less than 10 episodes in. We are still trying to get some traction. So please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe for us. Share the video amongst your friends if you think it's something that I like as well. And most importantly, don't forget to join me next time when we continue the Continental Shift. Cheers.